Hi guys, welcome to Antique Sprinklers. Today we're going to be talking about a SAM, uh, the uh, Rainbird 21 Stopomatic. That's what uh, the SAM stands for in that case. And uh, to give you a sense, it's in the same family as the uh, all the the Rainbird uh, 21 uh, pop-up impact rotors. And uh, just to give you kind of um, uh, different styles that uh, Rainbird manufactured for that same sprinkler. I, I laid them out here today. Um, I didn't put my rubber cover variety out. It would be like this, but about that much higher. And so going left to right, you've got the good old cast iron um, impact rotor that they made. You can see it's a little bit shorter than the uh, 21 AP that we've had a look at uh, in the plastic case, but everything else pretty much the same. And then we come to the 21 SAM, the 21 uh, Stopomatic, and later Rainbird also uh, used that um, acronym to stand for Sealomatic. But back when this guy was introduced, it meant Stopomatic. So I'm going to get these out of the way, and uh, we can talk about uh, this tall guy right here. If I don't break it, so um, first of all, this thing's new old stock. You can still see where the the admonishment to use uh, Teflon tape, etc., is still on the side there. It's never had a wrench on it. It's it's utterly pristine. And uh, it was introduced by Rainbird sometime in the early 1970s. I have it in my 1974 catalog. Uh, the next previous catalog I have is the 1970, and it's not in there. And then uh, as I look further down in time, it's still in the 1984 Rainbird, but sometime in the mid to late 90s, Rainbird dropped the 21 SAM from its, uh, from its lineup. It still made the larger uh, pop-up impact rotors like the 41s, etc., uh, in the SAM, but uh, this smaller guy, the 21, it, it didn't. And um, so let's talk about the reason the case looks like this in the, and why it's called a, a stopomatic. So in the bottom of the uh, sprinkler, and I've got a cutaway that shows this better, you're, you'll see there's a, a built-in check valve. And the reason for the check valve was if you have this, uh, this thing installed on an irrigation ladder, lateral and, you know, finished grade, it's in the ground here, and it's um, uh, downhill from the valve that controls it, all the water that's in that lateral will drain through this bottom uh, sprinkler, and that can cause some erosion problems, and it's just something you don't want. So Rainbird uh, built a, a check valve into the body of the sprinkler at the bottom of the internal, and it'll hold back, I don't know, seven feet or so of elevation change uh, across the zone. And uh, that was a really nice uh, innovation. Prior to that, uh, irrigation companies had been um, selling um, sort of standalone check valves that you would install on the swing joint at the very top under the, under the sprinkler. And um, this was a really nice, early, completely self-contained unit with the check valve in it. And like I said, yeah, the, the low head drainage is what they call it. It can really make a mess of the, the turf that you're trying to irrigate. And so, uh, so it serves a very important reason. And, uh, you know, um, I, I saw this in irrigation systems of all kinds. I can remember uh, getting called out to uh, a home that a, a contractor fairly new in the business had irrigated. And the last couple of spray heads on the line were, um, were uh, draining uh, water long after the zone shut off. And, you know, they were stumped. They thought it was a leaky valve. And, and uh, you know, I got them the variety of spray head that had the check valve in it. And that solved the problem just like that. So uh, useful things, check valves. A couple of the other features here. Obviously, it's made out of plastic. And uh, this would have been the first of the uh, 21 series, you know, 2131, 4151, or the 27, you know, 4757s that were plastic case. It's interesting because they're a little more advanced than the AP uh, model that we looked at before, but actually this guy was introduced, you know, I'd say 12 years after this one. And so, um, and it does not have a check valve in it. And so, um, so some of the other features because they were screwing internals into plastic and hadn't been doing that a whole long time when this came along. I mean, certainly there were some in the 60s, but to make it really heavy duty and to make sure that the screws didn't pull through the plastic body uh, when, the, uh, when the, the sprinkler popped up, they put these brass inserts around the threads and, uh, and that made for a very, very strong connection of the internal to the, uh, to the case 
of the sprinkler. <laughs> and it still has a metal cover on it, and you had a rubber cover option for these guys. And so this one, being a 21, it has a 530 seconds nozzle in it. It's putting out around 4.7 gallons a minute uh, across a uh, diameter, it's full circle, of about 87, 88 feet, uh, running about 50 PSI, maybe 60. And, um, and it runs beautifully. Like I said, the thing's been brand new. There's not a scratch on it. The worst thing that's happened to it is what you just saw when I dropped, knocked the thing over. And uh, not sure I'll edit that out. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, I did. Uh, so anyway, it's uh, one of a, uh, a great series of Rainbird pop-up impacts that they made for many decades. Uh, I don't have exact dates of the beginning of production, the exact dates of end of production, but we can say it's generally true that this guy was probably around roughly uh, 20 years, maybe 22, 23 years. And, um, and even though it's tall and you gotta dig a, hole, dig a deeper hole to uh, install it, etc., it's a good looking sprinkler. And uh, I think you're gonna enjoy watching it in action. And speaking of watching sprinklers, if you get a chance, take a look at the playlist I have of other uh, content creators' sprinkler videos. There's a lot of people out there doing really great things. And uh, I uh, add to it as I see those videos that I like. So uh, it's just an opportunity for you in one spot to um, discover a lot of different channels that might be interesting to you. And I encourage you to have a good look at it. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up because that tells um, YouTube to show it to more people. And uh, if you want to make sure that uh, you continue to get um, slightly better than mediocre sprinkler content, uh, feel free to subscribe to the channel. With that, I'll get out of the way. Thanks for watching.